Hi everyone, my name is Raku and I am absolutely happy to welcome you to my preview of Belsum Tech's latest aircraft with the F5E Tiger II. Let me anticipate my conclusion, it's so much fun to fly, I'm really really stoked and you will fly together with me in the next minutes and all I can say is have fun. Let's take a first look at the exterior because uh, in my opinion this is a substantial part of a preview and of course you already see the exterior from the beginning of this video and I really like it. I love the attention uh, to detail. I mean take a look at the nose gear for example. All those tiny little details. This is amazing. Actually we can and should extend our nose gear but we will see this in a few minutes. Besides the nose gear, let me scroll around, hopefully not too wobbly, look at the guns coming out of the nose, the pitot tube, the little sensors, antennas and lamps and all those little details, even the, the auxiliary inlet doors behind the wings, uh, we will see them, them in action later if I don't forget to show you, of course the engines. And scrolling further around you can see some other F5s coming inside parked next to me and this should give you a first idea of the skins to come. The rightmost F5 in front of me, the grey one, is the standard Air Force skin while almost other, all other planes are painted with an aggressor livery. The only exception being the, well, okay, who recognizes it? Of course the black F5 with the red star. Uh, right, well, right in the middle of the screen, more or less. And this one's also uh, known as a MiG-28. And if you have never seen a MiG-28, then please go and watch the film called Top Gun. All these skins are likely to be delivered with the release of the F5. I actually have to admit I thought about flying the MiG-28 livery today, but I think most of you would have questioned my seriousness, so let's stick with our aggressive uh, desert camo scheme. And okay, that's about it for the exterior. I honestly don't have anything to criticize here so far. This is the quality we are used to and some great work from Belsum Tech's 3D and 2D artists. But I think we all want to see its interior, so let's take a look at the cockpit. And sitting in the pit I feel the need to introduce myself a little more because I suppose a few of you know me. This is absolutely okay. As I said in the beginning my name is Raku and perhaps you already guessed it by my accent. I'm not a native uh, English speaker. My native language is German and I'm producing tutorial series mostly for the German DCS community. The reason I tell you this is, I actually, I have to admit this, I actually noted down everything I said until now, so the rest of this video will be kind of free speech and please excuse any linguistic mistakes. So taking a look around at the pit, well, the first time I ever took a seat in this pit, I almost felt like, well, well, like in a clock shop, all these these analog instruments. But okay, given this aircraft was developed in the 70s, uh, it's absolutely no surprise. Taking a look further around uh, the sideboards, we don't really see a lot of switches. Uh, the biggest amount of switches probably in the IFF unit, but the rest is there are not many switches and this might already lead to the conclusion that this aircraft might be quite easy to handle from an avionics standpoint. But we will see this. Okay, what are we going to do today? We will of course uh, start up the F5E taxi and take off and I have an A50 in Russian Airways flying around the mountains you see uh, right in the center of this green. And if you're good at taking a guess, uh, well, you see the A9 we have loaded and yes, we will try to shoot this A50 down. So you might get to see some, some actions and explosions today. Besides uh, the both A9s, we have a fuel tank loaded on our center line right below us. And so we do have an, an additional bit of fuel, uh, especially for the takeoff. The takeoff is quite fuel consuming. And yes, 
Uh, let's start it up, shall we? Okay, first step in starting it up is to get some ground power via the ground crew. Okay, actually you don't need ground power, but whenever I have it available, I like to use it. Actually, you can start it with uh, you can start it on your batteries only. There it is. Some instruments spinning around. We got a light. A light is uh, every time a good sign that we have some power. And next step is to turn on the batteries and the generators. And while I'm down here, I will also turn on the oxygen. At this point, maybe one word of caution. I don't, uh, I haven't memorized the real starter procedure yet. I read the manual for the F5E and whenever I say manual in this video, I refer to the, to the real deal, to the real uh, F5E flight handbook. I uploaded it on digitalcombatsimulator.com in the user files and if I don't forget it I will put a link in the video description so you might uh, want to take a look into it. And it's really really easy to read and really easy to understand. I can only recommend to take a look into it. So this is my, well, my personal starter procedure so to say. Okay, we have electricity and we will have electricity when we disconnect the ground power and the engines are running. We have oxygen and for me it's turn, time to turn on my lights. I like to fly with some lights, but this is up to your preference. But the exterior lights should definitely be on. Let's turn on the formation lights too and of course the anti-collision beacon. We can see the nav lights here, red, uh, right, green and left, red. There it is. Okay, next step, let's get some fuel flowing, let's enable the boost pumps left and right. And as I said earlier, we have a center line tank, but we won't uh, enable the pump for the external tanks now. We will do this after takeoff. I think I remember reading in the manual that you, that you take off only, <laughs> well more or less only with your usual boost pumps and activate the external tank or the pump for the external tanks after takeoff. Okay, we have some fuel flowing and we are ready to start our engines. To start our engines we need some compressed air. Usually, well, most modern jets have an APU, an auxiliary power unit, and this um, this auxiliary power unit sucks in some air and gives it to the engines, so to say. We don't have this here, but the engines need some air to, to get spinning, so we will need help from the outside and again via the ground crew. Some compressed air, um, let's connect this. And yes, my radio menu is in German, so please excuse if you can't read this, but trust me, at least to this point I know what I do. We have some compressed air, let's uh, use it and you will hear it, you will hear the generator come on and you will see the engine RPM increasing for our left engine. I will now close the canopy because it can get fairly loud and this is better. And the engine will idle at fifth, around 15% and this is a sign for us that we can ignite it, so let's ignite it, better to say let's close the circuit that ignites it and idle our left throttle lever. And there it goes, EGT rising, RPM rising, this is looking good. And the engine will idle at about 50% or the red marking on this indicator, this, this red line here. Let's just patiently wait until the startup sequence is finished. And there it goes, EGT decreasing within the within the green marking. This is looking good. Okay, left engine started. We will repeat this procedure for the right engine. Again, using some compressed air, monitoring our RPM indicator. And there it goes, RPM rising about 10%, closing the, the igniter circuit and idling the throttle lever. And there it goes, right engine starting up. Again, we patiently wait until the engine is fully started up and the startup sequence is finished. Thirty percent and rising, looking good. And 
and there it is wonderful okay we have two running engines our generators are on now we are producing our own power we can disconnect the external ground power, Turn off the ground power. we don't need it anymore and we will Got not you. really get a sign that it's disconnected other than the the radio transmission from our ground crew chief and we can also disconnect the compressed air we don't need it anymore Okay, let's continue to, to get the, uh, the plane fully started up. Let's start all the systems. And first thing, well, while we're down here, we already started the electrical power, the oxygen, the boost pumps. While we're down here, we can enable our P2 heat. Quite essential. We can reset the master caution. This actually needs to be resetted. It won't uh, turn itself off automatically when there is no master caution. Uh, no warning lights on the panel. This is good. We can, <laughs> okay, we can set uh, the the radio frequency for the Nellis Tower. And this is two five four, I think, and enable our UHF uh, radio. I actually should have asked the tower if I may start my engines. So, uh, okay, let's just do it now. Not ground crew ATC <laughs> Nellis and requesting permission to start up. Yes, my mistake. Yes, we may start our engines. Thank you. Okay, we will ask them again to uh, for permission to taxi, but not now. There are a lot of things we we have to do here. While down here, we can set our taken frequency or our taken channel. This is uh, 12 x for Nellis. It should be. I hope I'm right. 12 x transmit receive, and let's turn this to taken yes looking good one mile out uh, behind me and this corresponds to the emitter yes this is good and we hear it so let's get the volume down i don't like to hear the constant beeping great and so they these are our weapon controls we will deal with them while in flight but i will give us some light to it and up here we will uncage our standby ADI. There it is, uncaged. Uh, gear panel, nothing to mess right now. Behind here, what do we have? Radar, we can set it to standby already. Watch out, do not uh, set it to operating while on the ground. Every, every ground personnel standing in front of your aircraft might uh, get sick because of the radiation from your radar. Uh, pitch and yaw damper, we will activate them and the chef and flare dispensers we will activate them too and behind here mm, circuit breakers nothing to deal with right now right side looking good lighting's looking good iff uh, well let's turn mode 4 on for this flight looking really good okay i think we are ready for a taxi okay one thing's missing rwr let's turn it on oh and they have here we hear a beeping one E3 to the right, our own AWAX, and one A50 to our, well, be, behind us and to the left. This is the enemy A50 we will hopefully shoot down. Uh, checking everything, this is, oh, of course, one thing I did forget. We need to set our altimeter. Now let's just set it to our QFE. Oh, okay, this was too fast. Let's just set it to our QFE. Two eight seven nine, looking good. Okay, we are ready to taxi. I will ask uh, the ATC again to taxi. But when we are coming to the runway, I won't ask them for startup permission. We don't have to do everything with the ATC here. Just to this is just to demonstrate that the radio is working more or less. We may taxi runway 3, okay, will do. So, let's move throttle forward a bit. Around 80% RPM, we will start to roll. And there we go. And the F5 behaves uh, on the ground much like the F15. You have a single nose wheel steering button and I press it and I can use my pedals to to turn left or right. Uh, one word of caution, unlike the F-15, you should 
you should press the button in the F5 uh, before you start to to apply pressure to your pedals. I will demonstrate to you what happens if you don't when we have some space to our right, and I will demonstrate you. I will demonstrate to you our our turning circle on the ground because this is amazingly small. The radius of our of our turn is it's incredibly small. Trust me. Okay, we have some space. I let go of the nose wheel steering button. Let me show you my axis in the lower left. You can see my pedals on the bottom here. Nothing happening right now. But if I apply some, well, let me apply some left pressure, about half of it. When I press the nose wheel steering button now, you see it going woo. And this is quite hard to steer. So always first press the button and then turn your pedals. Otherwise, it uh, will be a real roller coaster. Okay, back on track. And I might demonstrate to you the, the turn radius while on the ground. And this is really, really, really small. I s I'm still pushing my button and I will now give a full right pedal. Applying a bit of, of thrust so we don't stop. And you see how, how really, really, really small our radius is. This is incredibly. You can turn on real tight spaces. This is amazing. I like it. I really, really like it. Okay, 360 finished. Let's continue to the runway. Oh, whoops. Yep. Turning left and aligning with the center line. We will take a quick stop here because we have to set up a few things for takeoff. A few very, very, very important things. Okay, kind of aligned. We will align it uh, correctly when we start our takeoff run. Let's just break here. Uh, yes, we are cleared for takeoff. Thank you. Okay, to takeoff. One important thing to note is that our speed brake is actually extended, much like in the F86. In the F86, if you start it up, you will start it with an extended speed brake, but uh, here it is the same, but the speed brake isn't isn't so visible so good. It's uh, under, our, under our fuse slash. So we have to uh, get it in. This is this red button here to the front and our speed brake will get in. A second thing to note are the flaps. The flaps are, well, they have an automatic mode. I I find this kind of fascinating. It's an, really an automatic mode for the flaps. Depending on your speed, your, your flight computer will automatically extend your flaps. If you put your gear down while in flight, the flight computer will extend your flaps to full. This is, it takes a bit of a workload off from you. This is really, really good. And to enable the automatics mode, I will put uh, this button to the to the rear end and you might watch this indicator it now indicates that the flaps are up and if I oops, this was my microphone button not intended if I turn this uh, button now my flaps are full um, flight computer realizes I'm way too slow actually yes I am I'm I don't have any speed right now and it extends our flaps when going through a certain through a certain indicated airspeed, it will automatically retract them. So far, so good. Next thing, we can hike our nose gear. Um, I already mentioned it in the beginning of the video that we can extend our nose gear. The manual calls it hiked or dehiked. This means the, the strut of our nose gear can be extended and this gives us an additional 3% or 3 degrees of AOA and effectively shortens our takeoff run. Let's extend it, this uh, switch here, and watch our nose go up. This is kind of cool. It's kind of low rider-like. <laughs> and the last but most important thing is that we have to set our pitch trim. Let me change the view around this uh, post my track IR so I can zoom in on this little this little instrument here this is our pitch trim as you see we are quite we are trimmed quite neutral 
and this is not in favor of the takeoff. For the takeoff we want, according to the manual, around 6 to, well, almost up to 9 units of pitch trim. Um, we don't have a we don't have a fat loadout right now, so I think I will go with 5. This is more comfortable and, well, I will have to do some tests right here to see to see how the manual uh, how the manual is in according with the flight model. But for now, around 5, the, the more weapons you have loaded, the more pitch room you give. This is kind of a general rule. Okay, let me zoom out again and I'm unpausing my tracker R again. Here I am. Well, we are ready for takeoff. Pitch trim is set, nose gear is hiked, speed brake is in, flaps are automatic. All right, full brakes and set 90. Engines booling up, looking good. We are at 90% RPM, engines are looking good, releasing the brakes now, throttling up, a full afterburner and let's get it going. Rotation speed should be around, well, 165 knots to 170 knots, but ultimately this is a best guess. Of course, there are the usual performance charts in the manual, but I did not calculate that. And airborne. Gear up. And trimming her down. She has a tendency to, to pitch up quite hard after takeoff, but as long as you know this, it's not a problem to counter it with, um, with, with some slight down trimming. And yes, here we, here we are, quite airborne, and she flies really beautiful. I like the flight model. It feels really good to, to fly her and roll her around and do whatever you want. And okay, why not test the, the instantaneous turn rate while we are airborne here? So let's just pull back, pull back, pull back. We are beginning to lose speed. 5 Gs. Five and a half, and okay, about five and a half G's, and subjectively she turns really, really fast. But that's about it from a test um, concerning the the turn rates and so on. I'm still stuck at, well, not really stuck at, but I'm still learning the avionics, especially the radar and the countermeasures. I have never ever used this panel in the back here, uh, the chef and flare dispensers, and I have absolutely no idea what these RWR buttons may do. Except for uh, the power button, this is quite obvious. But uh, I will... I will learn it, but I need more time for that. Okay, I can tell you a few things about the radar, but let's get her first into cruise mode. We need to enable our centerline tanks and we need to auto-balance our tanks. You can see on the fuel quantity uh, gauge that uh, the right tank has more fuel than the left tank. Okay, and this is why we have some balancing function. We could do it manually with a boost pump and crossfeed, but this may be a bit over the top for now, you can you can read this up on the manual. And so let's get our weapon systems and radar ready. Let's turn on our HUD to missile mode. We want to try to shoot an aim 9 at the A50. And let's turn on our radar to operating and we can see the radar working. Okay, let's tune into AWACS and get some some bearing to, to the A50. There's my radio menu, AWAX and Boogie Dope. Let's see where it is, it's somewhere left in front of us. A 088. 18,000, okay, we still need to climb. And yes, looking at the, the radar screen, we can see it's scanning. And we do still have a reference of our, uh, kind of like an artificial horizon. Uh, but we see no cursor at all. Pressing, well, if I press uh, the usual buttons to slew a cursor, nothing happens. This um, this is due to the range uh, bearing at the range being at 50 nautical, uh, 40 nautical miles, and in this range there simply is no cursor. When I go down to 20 nautical miles, you see way we do have a cursor and we can slew it around, but we I can't go go any more um, up than this. Of course, here's a reason too. We we can only lock targets up to 10 nautical miles. This is not much, but given that the radar is um, 
Well, the F5 only has a radar to get some ranging information for the gun. Let's put it this way. And we see our, our target, the A50. We are closing in and as soon as we are in locking range, I will lock her up. So let's get our weapon sort. Switching it to guns, camera and missile and choosing our wingtips. We do hear the, the infamous tone of the M9. Let's tune it down a bit. It can get really annoying over time. Locking her up. Okay, we got her locked at quite max range and I can see her. And there she is. I hope you can see her too in the video. But we will get quite... We will close in quite quite good before the M9 will actually lock on. Okay, our HUD is now in the missile mode. In the missile mode it's just a fixed reticle and nothing more. It's just so so that you get a slight idea where the bore side of the M9 is looking and where you have to put your target to get a to get a lock of the of the heat seeker. While the other modes are two two air to air modes, one with a fixed reticle, one with a gyro activated reticle and a manual mode. With a manual mode you can set the depression manually, this is for air to ground. And we won't do air to ground today, I definitely had not enough time to practice. Okay, closing in quite fast. Seems like she already wants to, to perform some evasive maneuvers. Let's just put us behind her and try to shoot her. I hope she won't fly into the sun. The M9 can get really distracted by the sun. Yes, thank you Overlord, I see this plane. And here we come. Yes, I want to try to get right behind her. I just want to follow her so, so that I have more time to, to aim and shoot. Seems like a good lock. I will wait a bit until we were a bit closer. This is quite a. This is quite far for the for the P model of the M9, at least uh, in my opinion. Okay, looking good. I'm going lead, and let's do this. Here she goes. Oh, there she goes, evasive, and we hit her. Okay, I won't fire the the, uh, the second aim nine because I want to show you the guns, and I won't want to kill her with her, the aim nine only. So let's turn off our aim nines, going guns only, and let's switch to the to the gyro driven guns mode. And we can already see our pipa changed. We got a range bar inside our pipa, and it's not quite in range. When it is in range, we will see a, a dot in the upper right corner. <clears throat> this will happen somewhere between the the three o'clock mark and the two o'clock mark So let's close in a bit and There's one little secret here. This gun is Extremely precise actually you you only ah, there we are in range. There is a dot actually you only need to to stabilize the pipper for I don't know about half a second and It will hit okay. There we go. I'm closing in too fast here. Let's get rid of some speed. Don't want to close in that fast. There she is. There she is. Okay. Ah, uh, she's quite damaged looking at it from above. Okay, let me reposition us. Let's get back behind her. And let's get her locked up again. Ooh, we are quite slow. And we really feel how slow we are. She gets really, really shaky and nervous. This is great. 
I really love how she feels. Okay, let's lock her up again. And there we are. Full after burner trying to close in. I want to show you how how really precise um, the the pipper is. Okay, beforehand, let me please dump this aim nine because she's a beast to trim out with some with this imbalanced white. This is ooh. Okay, here we go again, slowly closing in. And Pippa seems to be quite nervous, but it isn't that hard to to really get it get stabilized on the target for I don't know half a second, a second. Okay, hit the engines, quite good. Going for a full blast, and there she goes. I hope you you saw how really how precise she is, and this was quite a surprise for me. Um, most. Most, uh, well, quite manual gun modes I know in the other modules aren't that precise. Um, I don't know how how precise it is in reality, but this is this is awesome. This makes fun. And that's it for the A50. Okay, so let's get back to Nellis. Let's get back to land. Where is Nellis? Where is Nellis? Is it... Am I right above it? No, okay, slight orientation problems. Oh, it should be around there, yes, okay. Let's take a look at our HSI attuned in the Tarkan. Direction of this arrow should be Nellis, yes, this looks good. So, let's uh, try to do a nice, a nice landing. Okay, turning off our radar again, let's go into standby mode. We don't need it anymore, let's uh, turn off our weapons. Yeah, and our HUD, we don't need anything of this anymore. No more bandits around. And we can drop our centerline tank. We are completely on internal fuel. No more need for the centerline tank and I have to trim her out again. This is looking good. Okay, centerline tank, um, selective jettison and away the, with it. Okay, the landing. Um, I don't really know the correct parameters for a, for a nice and steady approach. I do this quite uh, intuitively until now. I haven't had a chance to, to learn these parameters, but I think we can get her down quite nice. Uh, at least I know it's almost completely AOA driven. We have the usual AOA meter down here with a mark at um, 13 to, to 16 degrees. 13 to 15, yeah, this should be around 15, though it's 14 to 16, hell, what's wrong with me today? 14 to 16 degrees uh, should be around the, uh, the correct AOA uh, units. And we have an indexer, the usual down arrow, donut and up arrow. So I will try to, to hit the donut, of course, like always. Okay. I'm climbing, this is not good, I want to lose altitude. Down there is Nellis, this is where I want to land. So, let's try it. Flaps are in auto mode, this is good. They will extend automatically when I put down the gear lever. This is how I want it to be right now. And I will put the gear down around 250 knots IIS. Or better to say, the the yellow line here, I suspect this is VLE and VLO, both uh, V-speeds concerning the, the gear operating speeds and gear extended speeds, so we should not extend our gear while we are above this speed. It may actually damage the gear and, well, I want to land and not crash. Okay, this could be quite a night final, let's go for it. Watching my, watching my my vertical speed, my air speed, should drop. Both should drop quite, quite slow. And keeping the runway inside, cause I will, of course I want to align myself. And again, she flies really beautiful. I can only repeat this. I'm sorry. Okay, let's get a bit slower. I wanna. I would like to put down my gear. And we have to lose some altitude. Okay, cut the throttles and let's get her down. 
250 extending the gear and you can see the flaps coming out too automatically. And this will add a lot of drag to us. Well, quite high judging by, by just the visual picture but this is okay we can let it drop a bit. Usually, well, at least uh, in, my, in the few landings I already did, I had the problem of losing too much speed too quickly. So let's see how it goes this time, but I managed to land her every time. So the engines are coming coming quite fast. You, get, you can get uh, throttle quite fast and this helps. Uh, this really helps. Okay, in the final, maybe a um, slight conclusion. Um, she's easy. She's really easy, at least she's easy to learn initially. The details uh, of the procedures are not that easy, but as I said in the beginning, there are not much switches, there are not much avionic systems to, to control, so this really makes her easy. Um, I hope this will be this model will be a good transition for Flaming Cliffs uh, 3 players to maybe uh, one of the, the more complex fully simulated models, but we will see this. I have high hopes, really, and she's, besides that, she's, she's really fun. Later I will hopefully try um, some, some air to ground stuff, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how she will behave there. Okay, this is looking quite good, 200 knots, let's slow it down a bit, and we have definitely have to sink more. AOA is far from good, 10 degrees. Now we're coming to it. Okay, flaring, cutting the throttle, and let's s gently settle her down. Uh, almost a donut, but uh, to be honest, this was the, the best and smoothest landing I ever did. Let's extend our shoot. Yes, we have a drag shoot. Uh, can we? Ah, there it is, you saw it. And hopefully I will I will get you an external view of it. It slows us down really, really good. Okay, this is enough. Let's get rid of it. Pulling it. And turning it in again. So, that's it for the, the preview of the F5E. I hope you had fun watching it. For me, it was definitely fun flying it. And I will fly it for a long time, hopefully. So, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!